Hi guys, good morning. Um, before I begin, I'd like to uh, make a roll call. So we have um, Danica, we also have um, Rena May, then we have Michael Jan, we also have um, Oliver, John Oliver. The deadline for the assessment is um, next week. I, I when I post the assessment, give it one week for you. I'll give it one week for you to uh, answer. So don't worry. I'm not pressuring you. So just uh, give it one week to answer. <clears throat> Good morning, also Hasni. Good morning, Liza May. So let's now continue with the lectures on el electrodynamics. Um, again, our main reference is Introduction to Electrodynamics by David J. Griffiths. And please buy this book. Uh, it's worth it. Uh, good morning, Era. Um, uh, the last meeting we discussed about um, distribution of charges and um, you have three kinds of distribution of charges. You have these um, kinds of distribution. Uh, DQ in the in the expression for the electric field, the DQ here can be changed to lambda DL if you have a line distribution of charge, or sigma DA when you have um, uh, charge distribution charge distribution on an area, or a raw DT when you have a charge distributed in a volume. Um, you can get, in, in this case, you can get the integral of DQ. The integral of DQ is just Q. So if you want to integrate, integrate uh, DQ, you want to get the charge of the line distribution or this area distribution, or the volume distribution, you just uh, get the integral of in, of each of, of this expression. So, for example, you want to get the the distribution, the total charge of this distribution. You just integrate this, and then you get the total distribution. <clears throat> so, we also discuss about Coulomb's law that you can uh, get. You measure the force between two charges by multiplying the two charges. Uh, you multiply that with a constant 1 over 4 pi epsilon sub O, where epsilon sub O is the permittivity constant divided by the uh, square, I mean, the square of the distance between the two charges. Uh, that's the force. But the electric field. The electric field is measured at, at, at point P. There's no charge at point P. The, the charge is somewhere. <clears throat> and uh, the electric field would just be this expression. For a line charge, for a, for a surface charge, and for a volume charge. By the way, for discrete charges, um, it's just the product of um, the two charges. I mean, it's just the charge uh, of, of the charge. Uh, it's, just, it's just a charge that is located somewhere. The direction here, R, <clears throat> is um, be careful with this because you cannot take this out of the integral unless that you know that this is a partition coordinate. But if it's a spherical or cylindrical coordinate, 
or in cylindrical and co curvilinear coordinates, you cannot take this out of the integral. But if it's Cartesian, you can just take this out. So uh, be careful with that. And R here is actually the the direction along the um, line joining the DQ uh, and the point P. Uh, this is actually the path I mean, but the P here is what I mean is the point P here. This one. <coughs> So anyway, um, let's continue that with the lecture. So now we'll go to the divergence and the curl of electrostatic uh, field or the electric field. So, um, so in this in this topic, we will be discussing about field lines, flux, and the Gauss law. So if you work uh, on problem 2.7, I know that you didn't, but uh, if in the future you, you will work on that, um, you will get to the mess of calculating the electric field and then you experience um, um, integrating um, quantities with uh, directions. So it's kind of um, messy, but when you know how to simplify these things by using some quantity other than the electric field, you will have a um, more simple um, solution, short, and um, with, which also gives you the same answer, actually. So. Uh, again, for a single charge, single point charge Q situated at the origin or the center of the sphere, for example, or, or yes, situated at the origin in the Cartesian plane, for example, in the Cartesian space, for example, um, the electric field at a point distance R from the charge the electric field would just be uh, given by this. It's just uh, 1 over 4 by epsilon Q over R squared. The R squared there is the distance of the charge and the point. And the direction is R. It's along the line joining the point and the charge. So uh, looking at this field, <clears throat> Looking at this field, you have um, the charge exerting this field in this direction, 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 everywhere in space. You can <clears throat> imagine it as a sea urchin, a sea urchin that it that has thorns in all direction radial direction so um that's uh, that's how you look at the field exerted by a point charge at the origin so looking at this you have um uh, when you have when you're near the source <clears throat> When you're very near the source, the R there, the R is small. So that when you are near the source, the field is strong. But if you're far away from the source, the field is um, weak. So the farther you go away from the source, the, the field or the electric field gets weaker. This one can be drawn something like this. So that uh, you, you get out of this uh, 
kind of complicated uh, drawing. You can actually just make uh, the drawing like this, where the charge is here, and then the field comes out of the charge uh, here in this direction, and you know that you know that the the field is stronger in this area because the concentration of the field lines are closer to each other, or the field lines are closer to each other, so that's why they are stronger here. And then when you go out here, the field lines are farther away. So the field also in this region is um, weaker. So you can, you can make this drawing a much cleaner version of this um, drawing compared, I mean, B is much cleaner compared to A. So again, um, it, this is in three-dimensional uh, drawing. So, as I said, I told you, it's like a sea urchin with its thorns coming out radially from the center. And there, uh, if you think of that, um, you are actually counting the field um, over a surface area of the sphere. So there are field lines uh, coming out of the of the sphere, radially outward. So you are dividing the field lines by the area, and the area is like um, proportional to r squared. The area of the sphere is four pi r squared. So that so the the lines are divided by. Um, r square in the order of r square so this is not a, like a circle the circle uh, is like a flat uh, circle and lines are coming out of the circle and the circle would just go like uh, if you divide the field lines with the circumference of the circle it's just one over r so it's it's not it's not two dimensional it's three-dimensional you you're dividing the field lines so you have a uh, lines coming out in all directions from the center then you divide the lines um, the field lines by the area that's that's making um, it's making it uh, proportional to 1 over R So, <clears throat> so there's an important thing here. So if you have a charge Q, which gives out, uh, for example, eight lines, then if you have a larger Q, say for example, two Q, then uh, that uh, two Q, if you draw it, should have 16 lines. <clears throat> so if you draw the fields, this is you can draw it like this. The field lines begin uh, with a positive charge. So it comes out of the positive charge and the negative charge will absorb those those fields. So for example, if you if you can see this figure, the positive charge, the fields go out of the positive charge, they are, are absorbed by the negative charge. They are absorbed by the negative charge. So in this case, you can see the, the fields coming out of the positive charge and they're absorbed by the negative charge. This is just by convention. Um, look at this, these are two positive charges and the fields are, are coming out of these charges and they, looking at this figure, 
the two charges, the two passive charges are repelling each other. Um, this one here, you have two opposite charges, positive and negative, then they are attracting each other. So there's an important thing here. Uh, when you do experiments, uh, when you actually do experiments in, in uh, electrodynamics, or I think you have experienced that before, the field lines can never cross each other. They can never cross. So it's always just one field line in a region or field lines in some field lines in the region, but they will never cross. As you can see from here, they don't cross each other. So when you, <clears throat> when you imagine an area near a charge, when you imagine some area there, um, you will um, assume that there are field lines coming out or coming into that area, depending on the orientation. In this case, you have uh, an area here, DA, and field lines are coming out of this area. And um, if you count, of course, there are infinite, infinitely many lines that comes out of the area, but to measure it, we define uh, we define flux of some field. So in this case, you have flux of electric field, and the definition of the flux of flux of electric field through a surface S is uh, this one, this expression. So in this case, you have. Uh, if you get the if you get the 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 small flux that comes out of this area, you just get the derivative of uh, d phi. You erase this um, integral. That's the flux in that area. This one, this dot here, means you are. Um, you are dotting E with respect to the direction DA. The direction DA, DA is arbitrary depending on you, but uh, you just use your right hand when you um, uh, do the, or you get the direction. So in this case, um, uh, in the figure, you're given that the, the DA here is in this direction. So anyway, um, uh, when you get the flux here, there's a difference in direction in the direction of the flux E of the flux of E and dA. So this is uh, theta here. Uh, it's theta here. So this one here, the dot here means cosine theta. So it's not all the time the electric field is in the same direction as the DA or the patch of area that you are, um, um, uh, that you're looking at or you're imagining in a, in a region. So, <clears throat> So since um, you are, so if you like to, to, for example, you're, you're going to um, imagine a, a closed surface and you put it somewhere in the region where there are electric fields, you can get the total um, flux by doing this integral. <clears throat> by putting a, a circle in a circle here 
that's the closed um, integral of the flux. And so if, if the surface traps a uh, charge, then you can measure the charge inside that surface by measuring the flux. And also, when it does not, um, when it does not enclose a charge, the flux that goes into the surface will just comes will just come out of the surface. So, if the flux, if you have a charge here and you have a surface here, the electric field will pass through the surface, and then it goes in there, and then it goes out. All of them will go out. So there's no trap uh, field inside the closed surface. So here in, in the definition, in this definition, you only include um, the electric field that is perpendicular to the surface. In this case, um, the angle between the surface and the field is 90 or the direction the air the direction of the patch should be in the same direction as the electric field um what i said before is this statement uh, the flux through any closed surface is the measure of the total charge inside that surface. And uh, this is actually the Gauss law, which we will, um, in, I mean, discuss in detail uh, a little later. So here, um, you have uh, a charge inside this surface. So this um, charge will produce a field going out of the surface. So there's a flux here. This is kind of a positive flux. When the, the field goes inside, that's negative flux. In this case, you have uh, for, for figure 2.16b, there's no charge inside. And so any field that goes in to the surface just goes out of the surface. So that's, uh, that's the thing that we have to um, also learn. So let's look at, or let's uh, take the, point charge at the origin, and then we enclose it with a sphere of radius r, for example. So we take this point charge and let that charge be the center of a sphere of radius r. How will you find the electric field, or, or let's say, um, how will you find the electric field caused by that charge? But anyway, let's uh, look at this um, exam, uh, this expression here. So the electric field that is exerted by the charge produces a flux. This is the electric field that is produced by the charge. And this is the flux through the whole surface of the sphere, this one. the whole surface of the sphere. So you have a circle here because you're doing a close integral. <clears throat> so what is the electric field at a point away from the charge? So this is the electric field one over four pi epsilon Q over R squared R hat. And um, the patch of area the patch of area that's parallel to r hat is r squared sine theta d theta d phi r hat. Of course, this is 
uh, there is another term here for the theta hat and the phi hat, but the electric field is only in the direction r hat, so you can you only consider r hat. The the rest of the two components of the dA of the dA will have a zero uh, contribution. So. Um, Again, uh, the electric field is in radial direction anywhere that it's it's unique to the sphere. All the fields are in radial direction for a point charge. So there's no theta direction or theta hat direction or phi hat direction, only radial. So here you have a, an, an integral which is this, and the dA, which is uh, this one. In this case, you can cancel R square, and then when you integrate sine theta d theta from um, zero to pi, you get uh, you get two, and then when you integrate d phi from zero to two pi, you get four pi. So the four pi will cancel and you'll be left with uh, Q and epsilon. So the total flux, <clears throat> the total flux of a point charge, if you enclose it with a sphere, that sphere, you can imagine, just imagine that sphere. You, you it, it's just in your brain not physical so if you get a total flux out of the sphere and making that point charge the center of the sphere you will get the charge over epsilon sub o that means you have measured the charge inside um the sphere by measuring the flux. So this is the relationship of the flux and the charge inside the surface. So in, in this um, expression, the radius of the sphere cancels out. So that means that you're not, um, you're not exclusive to one kind of surface. That means that all the surface, eh, this result is valid. For, for any surface like a cube or an irregular surface, once it traps a charge, the charge that um, comes out, I mean the field from the charge that comes out there is equal to Q over uh, epsilon sub O or the charge trapped within that surface. So no matter what surface you use, it doesn't matter. Uh, in this case, um, we're, we use the sphere, but a sphere could only be one surface. You can use any surface. However, sphere is like a symmetrical surface. So it's a kind of um, uh, an advantage, there's an advantage of using asymmetrical surfaces. <clears throat> Although other surfaces would also work. <clears throat> also, there's another there's another um, statement here. The same number of field lines passes through any sphere centered at the origin, regardless of its size. So the number of lines that comes out of, of the sphere, if you imagine a if, if you imagine a charge enclosed if, if you imagine a charge enclosed by a sphere, uh, whether that sphere is small or big, the field lines that comes out uh, from that field is um, um, same. The field lines or the flux that comes out uh, or comes in when the when the charge is negative, the fields will come in. When the charge is positive, the fields will come out. And 
uh, it's the same whether the the surface is small or um, or big or small or big. Anyway, good morning to uh, David Paul, Arian, um, Jezreel, Lycagen, and Dina 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 Chen. Good morning. So note here again, uh, the surface doesn't have to be a sphere. Any closed surface would trap would trap the same number of, of field lines or the same flux. So if there are many charges enclosed by a surface, um, we invoke the principle of superposition. The principle of superposition states that the total field in the is the vector sum of all the individual fields. So if you trap many charges, each of the charge exerts a field and you sum up the, the fields. That's uh, the, the total uh, effect that comes out of the surface. So when you get the total flux, the total flux would be just this. Um, so electric field is actually summation of EIs from each of the charge. By the way, you can interchange, interchange the integral and summation because they, they mean the same. Uh, only that this summation is for discrete distribution and integral is for continuous distribution of uh, contribu uh, distribution. So you can interchange summation and integral. So um, <clears throat> you replace E with this. And so it becomes this one, but you interchange the integral and the summation. And then the integral of um, the integral of EI dot DA would just be this one. The integral of EI would just be QI. QI over epsilon sub O. And so you have summation of that. So the flux is actually the total flux is actually just the summation of all the charges inside. So um, when you have a charge enclosed by the surface uh, here, Q enclosed, for example, then the flux of that would be equal to this. And um, the flux would be just equal to Q enclosed over epsilon sub O. So this is now the Gauss law. The Gauss law. The Q enclosed here is the total charge enclosed within the surface. So here, um, this is uh, this is the integral. This is the integral e expression for the Gra Gauss law, and um, you can turn it into a differential uh, differential equation by applying divergence theorem. Um, you know that divergence theorem, that if you have a, a closed integral of a vector that uh, dA, you can write uh, that uh, integral in, in terms of this, in terms of the volume enclosed by the surface. And um, by the way, um, the Q enclosed is also the integral of the rho times dt. 
which is just here. This is just the integral of dq and the integral of uh, rho dt. So, so you have um, we go back. So your Q enclosed will just be the integral of rho dt. This one is equal to this divided by the epsilon here so that you will have, um, so this one now is equal to this divided by the epsilon. So you have the gradient, I mean, the um, divergence of E is equal to rho divided by epsilon. So that the Gauss law we can write it in terms of um, uh, integral form or in, differ in differential form. So there's a problem here. Suppose the electric field in some region is found to be E equal to K R cube R in spherical coordinates, K is some constant. Find the charge density rho. So you would use this formula, use this formula to solve um, 2.9. Find the total charge contained in a sphere of radius R centered at the origin. Uh, do it in two different ways. So I hope you can uh, do that on your free time. There's another problem here. A charge Q sits at the back corner of a Q as shown in figure 2.17. What is the flux E through the shaded area? Through the shaded area here. So how would you calculate that? So is it easy to calculate or is it hard to calculate? It's easy actually. It's, it's a little, there's, they use a little trick here. You actually can um, assume that the, the field uh, that comes out of, um, that comes out of Q over the whole sphere is, um, is one over four by epsilon, um, or the total flux that comes out is Q over epsilon sub O. So for the whole sphere. So this is just one eighth of a sphere. And then, it's, then this is also just part of one eighth of the sphere. So you can just um, calculate the flux there. So Again, um, let's uh, go back to the electrostatic fields. Um, this is the, the electric field. So if you have a volume or a, a charge density, uh, the dq will just be uh, this one. This is just the dq. If you have um, uh, a distribution of charge. So uh, in this case, you have all space um, because the charge is just distributed in a volume. If you concentrate the charge in a volume, if you extend it to all space, um, the charge will be left in the volume. So you can integrate the whole space and the charge will just be in the concentrated in some area or region, all space. Uh, the other points in the region would have no charge. So instead of instead of just V here, we can say all space. 
any way the charge will just be cons uh, constituted at uh, the volume V. So anyway, I'd like to say good morning to um, James and Jay also. So by the way, um, this one here, you have the separation vector, and this one is this uh, separation separation distance. Um, this is again defined by this, where R is the uh, field point and R prime is the source point. And um, when you do the integration, the charge is always located at the source point. So when you integrate, it should always be res with respect to the prime coordinates, to the prime coordinates. So the volume would be d tau prime, and the rho here should be r prime. And of course, this r, this r here, r square and r hat, this contains r prime. So you cannot take this out of the integral. And in the previous lectures, in the previous lectures, we found out that this one, the, the, the divergence of this vector is equal to 4 pi delta cube r. So that we can replace, we can replace this, this one here with uh, 4 pi delta cube. So if you replace that, we will have this expression. And uh, of course, here you can cancel 4 pi and 4 pi. And then um, epsilon, of course, stays. And then this, the integral of this is when r is equal to r prime. And this is just equal to rho, the function rho, so that uh, you have another way of, of um, deriving the differential from the Gauss law. Uh, which is just that the divergence of E is equal to the charge distribution over epsilon sub O. So anyway, this is just a, a redundancy of the of what, what was discussed earlier. Uh, Gauss will remember that. Gauss law. So the integral, if you apply divergence theorem, this one, if you integrate this, you also integrate this with respect to volume, with respect to volume. Um, so you will have uh, this one and this one here. And this one, this is equal to that. And this one is also equal to that. So therefore, you, this this is the integral, of, um, the integral form of the Gauss law. So that's how it's done. So let's now apply Gauss law in some examples that we're going to discuss. Um, you will be doing this examples by. Uh, your own handwriting, but put some details on these um, examples because that's uh, that's one way of uh, knowing that you have um, at least understood the lecture. So I can assess you, and uh, you'll be able to uh, do this. Uh, in the assessment of this lecture later. So, find the... Uh, by the way, 
there's a statement here. With symmetry, the Gauss law is um, very useful because it um, exploits the symmetry of the, um, of the charge distribution. So for example, if the charge distribution is um, like a point or distribu distributed over a cylinder or a sphere, a surface of the sphere, then it would be easier to find the field um, in that, um, uh, for that distribution. So for example, <clears throat> Find the electric field outside a uniformly uh, charged solid sphere of radius R and total charge Q. Solid sphere. Um, find the electric field outside. There's an outside here. A uniformly charged solid sphere of radius R and total charge Q. So in this case, you have uh, you have the Gauss law. You have to use this Gauss law, exploiting the symmetry of the uh, charge distribution. So draw a spheric surface at, with radius r greater than the radius of the sphere. This is called the Gaussian surface. The Gaussian surface is your imaginary surface that you draw to, to enclose the charge, the charge distribution. So you're enclosing the charge. This is your original charge distribution. And you're enclosing it with a Gaussian surface that is also a sphere. We exploit the symmetry of this um, of this uh, charge distribution. So this this uh, sphere inside will um, will inject a field this direction. It will, in in this direction it will ex exert a field here. In this direction it will like, exert a field there. In this direction, it will exert a field also there. So in here, it's like a field like that. So when you consider an area here <clears throat> in the Gaussian surface, the direction of this area, the direction of this area would be here, that's the DA of that area going outside of the sphere. And at this point, the electric field is also coming out of, of here, the electric field. So the direction of the area, the direction of the area and the electric field is the same. So the angle between them is zero. So in this case, the cosine here, the cosine here would be equal to one because theta is equal to zero. For this point, if you have a patch of area at this point, um, the direction would be uh, that one. And then the electric field would also come out of, of here. So again, at this point, the angle between DA and the field is equal to zero. So cosine of zero is equal to one. So at any point, at any point here in the surface of your in the, at the surface of the Gaussian surface, this is uh, R away from the center. So this is like uh, your your solid sphere is also uh, is quite concentric, concentric with your Gaussian sphere. So anywhere at these points, the electric field 
and the patch of area will have the same direction. So the set, the cosine theta there would be um, z uh, would be one everywhere. So here your integral that dA one over epsilon sub over q q enclosed would be uh, this one now will become um, integral of e that dA. The, this is the magnitude of the uh, electric field times the area. This is equal to E D A cosine theta, but cosine theta here is equal to one because theta is equal to zero. So that, um, so, so that your um, E, E is constant, uh, the magnitude of E is constant, so you can take that out of the integral. So only the D A will be integrated in this case. And you have um, the integral of dA. The whole surface of the sphere will have 4 pi r squared. r squared because this is the, the, the radius of your Gaussian sphere. So 4 pi r squared. And your electric field times 4 pi r squared is just equal to Q, which is the charge enclosed over epsilon sub O. So your electric field would be given by 1 over 4 pi epsilon sub o q over r squared in the direction uh, r. This is radial, <clears throat> radial direction. So in all directions that, that comes out from the center is radial to, is a radial direction. So that is the, uh, um, that is the uh, electric field. So what is uh, the feature of this um, problem uh, is that the field outside the sphere is exactly, exactly the same as it would have been if all the charge had been concentrated at the center of the sphere. So it's um, kind of, uh, um, it's kind of uh, um, similar to the to the uh, charge point charge located at the center of the sphere. There are there are some other geometrical or geometrical symmetry that you can exploit and be able to use the Gauss law. Um, you we we exploited already spherical symmetry we can exploit cylindrical symmetry symmetry by drawing a gaussian surface that is co axial with a cylinder with a charge a cylindrical charge distribution here we have exploited the gaussian surface which is a sphere by drawing a sphere uh, concentric with uh, the the distribution and then we can also use uh, plane symmetry uh, by using uh, Gaussian pillbox spanning uh, at the surface of the charge distribution. So this is um, this is the cylindrical Gaussian surface that we can use, and this is also the pillbox that we can use. But uh, we do that in example. 2.3, for example, um, a long cylinder, a very long cylinder, this one here, this one is a cylinder. Uh, a long cylinder carries a charge density that is proportional to the distance from the axis. And there is a charge distribution uh, in that cylinder. Uh, the row is Ks. Um, Ks there's a constant and s is the distance from the axis to the um, from the axis to the point so for here um, it's the, the s is always measured from from the axis question is find the electric field 
find the electric field inside this cylinder. So in this case, you're going to find a field inside the cylinder and therefore you have to draw a Gaussian surface that is inside the cylinder here. That is, um, that is the surface of the cylinder. By the way, how many surfaces has the cylinder? Um, the cylinder has um, uh, a surface here and a surface here also. So, and it does also a curved surface that's uh, on the side of the cylinder. So there are three, three parts of a cylindrical surface, the flat, uh, surface at the ends of the cylinder and the curve um, part. So this is your Gaussian surface inside. And so again, starting with uh, Gau I mean the Gauss law, which is um, just the closed integral of e to the a plus one over uh, q in close over epsilon sub o. You can uh, by the way, the Q enclosed here is just equal to rho dot uh, d tau, or rho d tau, and rho is just um, ks as given by here. Uh, the prime coordinates is because uh, this prime point is because it's the source uh, uh, point. I mean, the, you are integrating at the source um, of the field, so you have prime here. So K S S D S D phi D Z, and then uh, of course um, your K will just come out. Your D phi will be integrated from uh, zero to two pi, so it will come out here, and then um, your D Z, your D Z will just be the length of the, uh, I mean, the length of the Gaussian surface here. Because the length of the, this is the only, this is, this, this is the only part that uh, is enclosed by the Gaussian surface. This is the only charge. This is the only charge, the part of the charges is, that is enclosed by the Gaussian surface. So, <clears throat> So you have um, you have this uh, Q in close equal to uh, two thirds. Uh, the integral of S squared is just equal to S cube over three. So your Q in close would be um, equal to that. Uh, two thirds pi K L S cube. Okay, it's a constant. L will just be the length of the of the of the, the Gaussian surface. So your integral of e dot dA, the e dot dA here uh, would be, if we look at this, um, the electric field that comes out um, by the cylindrical distribution would be. In this, in, at this point would be in this direction. Uh, at this point would be in this direction. At this point would be in this direction. So it's also radial. It's like um, a, a, um, a cone, a circular cone, where your um, strands of the cone will just be like radial with respect to the axis. So. And the patch of area here, the patch of area, it will also be in the same direction as the field. So the angle is still zero with, with respect to the um, uh, axis. So the electric field here comes out from the axis and then your patch of area is symmetric with the axis, so it's going in the same direction as the field. So the angle between the field and the patch of area is zero everywhere at the surface of this Gaussian surface. So the cosine of zero is still one. And so here the dot, the cosine 
of the theta, it's just equal to one. So it becomes the magnitude of the electric field times the dA. And the magnitude is, of course, constant at every point in the surface here. Uh, everywhere uh, at S distance from the axis, the magnitude of the electric field is constant. So that um, uh, your E, can, you can take that out of the integral and just integrate dA. And the dA um, is, of course, at this point, is directed in this uh, direction. In this uh, surface, this side surface of the sphere, the dA is directed in this direction and also here in this direction. But the electric field is going there. All electric field is, is um, radial in direction with respect to the uh, cylinder, uh, the curved surface area of the cylinder. So the area which has the, the patch of area on this side of the cylinder will be perpendicular to the electric field. Here, the direction of the patch of area will also be perpendicular to all the electric field. That means that the angle between them is 90. And so cosine 90 would be zero. And so you are only getting the area that's uh, the patch of area that's uh, in the same direction as the field and that area is equal to uh, 2 pi sl this is the surface area of the sphere uh, you don't include this you don't include this part and this part because the electric field and the patch of area there will be perpendicular to each other and so it doesn't contribute to the total electric flux of the surface and so your uh, electric field now will be um, this because uh, this is el electric field times 2 pi SL is equal to 1 over epsilon sub O, 2 thirds pi K L S cube. You can cancel the S and so this becomes 2 and then you can cancel the L and the pi so that your electric field will be um, that expression. So there will be, uh, and th this and uh, the, the lecture ends here. There will be an assessment for this lecture. And so you can uh, answer the, the questions there. It's very important. Give it, I'll give it this afternoon and then give it one week for you, I'll give it one week for you to answer. Um, um, uh, just take your time. You have seven days to answer that one. Um, see you next meeting class. Uh, I hope you understand a little bit of the lecture.